we had to take it that night to the deer processor down at Ovid. Now, this is Bob Lacina. Right here we are at Bob's Deer Processing. Here's a guy who decided to go into business for himself with Bob's Deer Processing. You know, it's a type of business that I think it's sort of an illusion in a way. You get lots of business and it all comes at once at deer season. And when that happens, you get stacks and stacks of deer that you have to cut up for the happy customers. So let's stop in here at Bob's. I tell you, he's, he's, got, he's got them piled up outside right now that they're loading them up and putting them in the coolers. But it looks like this was a banner deer season. I would say that Bob Lacina is having the deer processors dream a nightmare. I mean, just so many deer to deal with. But look at this, John. Look at the antlers on these babies. Boy, this is some nice looking bucks. Find out how soon he's going to get those hanging in the cooler and how many deer are in the cooler. Oh, -ho. where are the crowds? Here's the man himself, Bob Lucina, Bob's deer processing. And we got mom here working. How you doing, mom? Fine, fine. It's a family business. And you're wrapping the steaks and... Mm -hmm. Oh boy, look at these steaks, John. See, this is how you guys at home who want to butcher your own deer, if you want to take the time and the patience to get all of the fat and connective tissue off, those are beautiful looking steaks. Here's the maestro. Maestro who has cut up how many deer this season? Uh, we're at almost 600 right now. Of course, you haven't done that many. No. I happen to see a few outside. Yeah, there's quite a few outside yet. Now, with just you and mom here, how are you going to catch up? Well, the crew will come in now. Oh. At school's out. Oh, okay. The night, night shift will be here. Okay, so you hire school kids to... Yeah, quite a bit. Yep. Now, is your trimming, what are you trimming off here? You got a steak or a roast? Yeah, or this is just off the hind quarter, and I'm just getting all, all this stuff off from it. Mm -hmm. And all the icky goes in the barrel. Icky in the barrel. Yeah, and the rest goes in there for hamburger. Burger stuff goes in here. Now, what are those gloves you're wearing? They're not the cut-proof gloves. Well, no, but they, it, it, it keeps my hand clean. If somebody comes in, I have to take them off, and I got clean hands to work with. And it looks better when the people come in. So it, they're just rubber gloves? Just about everybody, everybody wears them, yeah. Uh, do you do that for any sort of health reasons or anything? I mean, you know, the talk no. about tuberculosis or Lyme no, disease I or just, anything? No, I just started it, and I just always kept on doing it. Just, hey, c can you put the knife down a moment and, and give us a quick tour? Because sure. we got people that want to know how the deer season was, and we always use you as as a, a test, you know, how many deer you have in compared to last year. What do we got going here? What do you want to see first? Well, you got what? 555? Yeah, 555. Is that where we're at? Yeah, I shot down there um, Tuesday, Tuesday night and opened back up again Friday. And most of the people came back because we had two coolers full. Two coolers. Well, let's see what, this is the freezer? Is yeah, this, uh, the freezer there. okay, looks, looks to me like you're up to 395. Oh, uh, I just, I'm just cutting right now 401. 401. So you have about 100 and 140 or 50 deer. Yeah, about 156 to go. 156 to go, and then of course more people will bring them in. Well, let's let's go through here. This is where you have the the carcasses hanging. Of course, you got to strip the hide off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we skin and quarter our deer right in here. Okay. So you got a couple on deck. Now let's go back through here, John. Oh, here here's a collection of knives. I bet you they're sharp. And most of them are. Extremely sharp. Now we're into the cooler. Oh, well, you've taken uh, taken down a row of deer? Yeah, we've um, we've been working on this cooler, basically. When one gets full, we just switch over to this one. Everything is in row. And we got just this row against the wall to do yet. And then we go back out and start in the other cooler. Okay, well, let's take we a look. Keep, them, keep it rotated, right in line. Well, some of these racks. Here's a, it's a nice eight point. Mainly, oh, look at this tall rack here, another eight point. Most of these seem to be bucks, is that right? Uh, more does are coming in now, but we've had a lot of bucks come in. Uh, during bow season, the bucks are coming in probably, oh, I would say 10 to 11 bucks every three does. Hmm. But now gun season, we, we've had a lot more does come in now. A lot of the big bucks have already gone, but we've had a couple of nice 12 points, 10 points. Wow. Well, let's, this is your the cooler that you had, and you added a new cooler. Yeah, I got a new cooler now. So how many deer are hanging in here right now? 
Yeah, which one? This one here? This one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe 45, 50. 45, okay. It holds 120. Okay, this one right here, they just brought this in today. His boy shot it from Ohio. And uh, right now, it's still bull season down there. That don't, gun season don't open up for, probably, I think, until the end of the week. Then it opens up. Huh. But he said this one here was a small one compared to the other ones that he's seen. He's well, seen isn't a lot. that what everybody yeah. says? So huh, that is a big deer, though. Now, what, what about these deer laying here? You said these are the ones that, that, that came in today? Yeah, these are the ones that came in today. Now, er, and when I'm here by myself, we just slay them here until the other guys come in. Then every night, everything is hung up. Okay. But now, with, they're all right in order. You know, people are going to wonder, is this sanitary to have them laying down like this? As long as it's cold. When it's warm or rainy, they go right in. And that, usually the people who bring them in will help me hang them right up. Okay, but I mean, the fact is that these deer are field dressed. The hide is on the outside, and really there's no way to contaminate the meat. No, they're Because all they're right. all... Yeah. And they're hanging up. Well, let, let's go take a look. Now, in the second cooler, this is a cooler that our enterprising Bob Lucina built for this deer season. I mean, you uh, have this baby loaded. Yeah, we filled this up on um, Sunday. So the deer hang, well, right now it's... Well, uh, this is the second time this is full. This is already filled up <laughs> and uh, emptied out, and we just filled this in again from Monday to, like, Tuesday. It, it refilled again. Of course, you don't have to have the air conditioner on or the, the freezer on. No, I, a lot of times I use blowers when it's just cold. It's colder outside than what my compressor can run. Oh, no kidding. So, so this, this is great weather for me. I guess. Well, right up there you have some hides. Yeah, this is where um, basically in October and stuff I store some of my hides until I get my semi in. Oh, a, a semi truck over there? Yeah, I got a semi trailer over there. Uh, I filled one of them last year. I had like 4,200 hides in it. Oh, so you take in people's deer hides, right? Other yeah, than just I, right. the deer that you're I'll processing. go, I'll go around the around the state when season's over and buy other people's hides too. Wow. Plus my own. So this is another little side business from from the deer processing. Yeah, I gotta keep something going until grass grows. Now, how do you? Now these don't look like. Well, I guess they're salted. This is yeah, salt out salt, here, huh? Right. That we salt them real good. I go through. I think last year I went through like five ton of salt. Holy cow. So you take these hides down to somebody and you and, and you make that their nightmare because well, they have to go through and cut all of the meat off of this. Right. Um, a guy comes and picks them up with another semi. We load them all up and they go either New York or Wisconsin. I'll be darned. And uh, it's a lot of work. Well, that's something else. Well, how would you size up the season, Bob? Um, right now, I think it's doing a lot better than last year. Uh, I, I, looked I mean, do, do you think, it, is that just because your business is up? Uh, but does I, that I don't know. We've season? had a lot, a lot of new people this year, and a lot of the old people are back. But the people, the reports I've been getting from up north, has been the deer's been real, real down. But down south around here, it's been great. Guys been bringing in three, four deer at a time. Wow. So and, they've been uh, filling the tags. Is that is that because the computer glitched and they got extra <laughs> doe tags or what? Yeah, some guys are, are bragging about they got three, four doe tags and what a mess. Huh? They'll be using them this week. Well, how do you how do you keep uh, your deer straight here? Everybody gets a number. Oh, when you bring them in, yeah, yeah, they, everything is right in order. So you from do, number one right on right on through. So you do each deer individually, right? Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of guys Whenever. are concerned about that. Oh yeah, each deer is got, they got like two tags on them, and it's written down. So if a tag does get ripped off, I can go back in the sheet in the side, and when it's hanging up, you can take any tag off, and I'll tell you whose that deer belongs mm -hmm. to. So you experience experience and keep your eye on it right because people always think they're getting gypped yeah, i know my I deer know. was bigger than this huh? well the the ones that look like they weigh 100 pounds or less will weigh because we've had a couple of people come in and really irate and when their deer only weighs 50 60 pounds <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're not, not going to get back a lot of meat it's right. not, and i feel really bad when i want to give back one sack of meat you know i, I feel terrible but <laughs> i can't give no more back than what they give yeah. me to, to work with so we, a lot of those small deer will weigh just for protection. Now it's been my experience when I butchered deer myself, I'd get maybe 35 pounds of meat, boneless. You, you get back approximately one third of the deer's weight. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically where it was shot, we've had them shot in the hindquarters a couple times, and there was, that's where the stakes are. Mm -hmm. So they lose that meat. Right, and we've had, uh, uh, last year a guy came in with two eight points, or two different guys, but they both mm -hmm. had two eight points. And they both weighed exactly 135 pounds. One guy got back three sacks of meat, and one guy got back two. Because the hind quarters on their one were wide, were huge. Mm -hmm. And the other guy was really slim, but he had a big chest. Hmm. And that's just the way it goes. You know, that's, if you got big hind quarters, you're going to get back a lot of meat. Mm -hmm. 
That's oh. I can't put meat that isn't there in the bag. So. so so there's two things to look at when you're hunting: the size of the rack and the size of the rear end. Because that's, <laughs> yeah, that's where the meat is. We've had a couple, we got a couple of those in there.